We're joined today by Sarah Atherton, live from London, to give us an update on the view of the constituency. So, Sarah, to begin with then, you have some very positive news for Wrexham to share with us, don't you? I do, and thank you for having me on your show. Some breaking news from London. But uh, it was BASE, which is the Business Energy and Industrial Strategy Department. That's now changed. It all gets very confusing. It's now the Department for Energy Security and Net Zero. They have chosen Wrexham to be one of four pilot sites to trial uh, their new way for people who haven't received support with their energy bills. So that's people who use um, oil or bottle gas who are or, or who or could be on a prepayment card um, for them to access their £400 and £200. So, so far, these people haven't received anything at all. So you can now go online or easily go onto my website, click the link. It takes you to a UK Gov site where you put your details in if you're on bottle gas or oil or prepayment card or you're quite confused with the various schemes that are available at the moment, put your details in. This is worked in conjunction with UK Government and Wrexham Council. Wrexham Council will then check your eligibility uh, and release, release the money to you. So this is really good. We have, uh, if you go on the website, my website, there's also a telephone number for those who can't manage to do it online. It is a trial. We have had a few glitches. I have fed them back to the department and they've responded and tweaked things as they go. But I'm really pleased because, particularly for people in park homes, uh, they were really struggling once to know how and when they were going to get their money. Uh, and I was passing that up the ladder here in London to the government. So uh, really pleased that Wrexham is one of the trial sites. So for further details, please go on my website. So if you're using bottle gas, or oil, that's the alternative fuel payment scheme, which is £200. And then there's the energy bill support alternative funding scheme, which is if you're on a prepayment card, and that's £400. So go onto my website for further information. That's really good news for Epson. And of course, as a rural community, I'm sure that there's quite a significant number of people that that would um, benefit, aren't there? Oh, oh absolutely. And, and, you know, there's a lot of people that haven't received anything to date. Uh, a lot of people have. Most people have received uh, some funding. Uh, but, uh, you know, I know it's getting warmer, but it is still only February. Uh, and traditionally, we do have cold weather in March. So please go on the website and find further details. Fantastic. Thank you. And there's also been a, a lot of um, press coverage recently about the Shared Prosperity Fund, hasn't there? And um, the effect of that in the uh, Wrexham and North Wales area. Well, this is another great scheme from the UK government. Now we're out of the European Union. The money has come directly from London. Uh, and it hasn't gone to Cardiff, which is something we fought very hard for, because, uh, as we all know, we feel as if uh, we're left out in North Wales and all the money goes to South Wales. So this is something that the UK government has listened to. They have spent £22.4 million pounds over the next three years directly to Wrexham Council. And this is going to be uh, shared out with charities, businesses and individuals around Wrexham. This is called the Shared Prosperity Fund. The application for round one is open now. It closes on Sunday. Uh, I've been promoting it for quite a few weeks now. They've been inundated uh, with applications, which, which is great. Again, go on my website to find further details because there are smaller key grants up to 250000 and then there are larger grants available as well. So please have a look on the website. Closing date for round one ends on Sunday, I think it's Sunday, is it Friday? It's Friday the 24th, uh, but there will be around two around April time. So if you haven't got your ducks in a row um, with short notice, there is another opportunity. This is really good news. This is so Wrexham can start investing in itself. We have lots of opportunities afforded to us at the moment. We need to take control of our own destiny here in Wrexham, uh, and this is one way of doing that. Uh, and I know I've certainly been around many charities and organisations who are now looking for funding uh, and have directed them to the Shared Prosperity Fund. But in addition, I also do a grant finding scheme within my own office. So I get notified of all grants that are available uh, and I match them up. I'm a matchmaker. I match them up with charities and individuals and CICs within Wrexham. Uh, and to date, we've been successful in 
finding just just shy of three hundred thousand pounds for local charities and organisations in Wrexham. So if you if that's a smaller grant, perhaps a play group or something like that, please get in touch with my office and give us more details so I can match you up with any grant opportunities that may be available. If it's larger money you want, whether two hundred and fifty thousand pounds or over two hundred and fifty thousand pounds, please go on the website or the council website and look for shared prosperity funds. So there's some great opportunities coming our way at the moment. The whole idea of shared prosperity funds is to have pride in place. And you know, our strap line at the moment is raising Wrexham, so it all fits in quite nicely. I'm picking up on something you've said in recent conversations we've had with Councillor Mark Pritchard, leader of the council. Um, he's really, really pleased that the decision-making power has been given to people who are the right people to make decisions for Wrexham. And I believe you're also involved in some of that decision-making, aren't you? Yes, there's going to be a, a panel for larger funding of, of the over £250,000. And that's made up of uh, councillors, elected representatives, BWP, uh, St Giles and Val, all the key players, the business um, community have got representation there as well. So it's a good opportunity for, for Wrexham to serve Wrexham for the first time in uh, in 20 odd years. Uh, so this, this is really good news for us all. And that, that's a conversation we should probably return to very shortly when we look at transport, but we're not quite there yet. Um, you've also been um, fairly recently in Eagles Meadow, haven't you? There's a lot of changes happening in that part of town, aren't there, at the moment? And a lot of positive changes for that matter. Yes, some positive, some, some not so positive, shall we say. So I've been uh, inundated with a few concerns around the gym, Everlast moving from Plug Cork. Now, Marks and Spencers are moving from Eagles Meadow. They're, they are, well, I say they're downsizing, they're reducing what they're offering, so they're no longer doing clothes or have a cafe, which I find really quite bizarre because the, the cafe is always full at Marks and Spencers. But they're moving the food hall over to Plug Cork, where the gym was. And they're extending it. It's going to be quite a large food hall there. So the gym is moving out. That's caused a bit of concern because I think they've had to do it quite quickly for some residents. Uh, but I do know that the gym are looking at alternative premises and hopefully they will find those pretty soon. It will leave a gap as far as I know to date uh, in the old Marks and Spencers. But the Debenham site in Eagles Meadow is going to be utilised very soon, or the plan is it uh, for it to be utilised very soon. The proprietors of Eagles Meadows, Eagle Meadows is not concerned about the future, uh, it just will be different. And we have heard that organisations like Yellow and Blue have recently announced that they're also moving to Eagles Meadows, so a change of premises for them. And there, there are apparently lots of new groups that are beginning to occupy Eagles Meadow, don't they now? There are, I mean we've got um, Premier Radio are there, we've got the PIS our Polish community, they have uh, an office and drop-in centre there. So it, it, it's diversifying, it's changing, um, but it, it, it's bubbling. It, it, there's lots of activities going on, lots of new enterprises uh, and new opportunities going on in there, moving away from the traditional uh, stores that we ha did have, the retail stores, which across the country they're moving out to places like Cheshire Oak, Broughton, uh, more retail park areas. So our town centres are changing and we just have to change with them. Of course, you know, we've got ABSA living. That's that proposal. There's a proposal at the moment that uh, to look at the scope for that to move out of Island Green to its main site. I mean, Island Green's been plagued with parking difficulties. Um, so I don't really know what's going on there. If you want to attract people to a place, you don't then penalise them with parking. So, you know, it, it's a product of its own sort of vindictive nature, really, uh, the way it's applied its parking. So there is a possibility that as the may be moving out from there. Um, but things are changing. Uh, people are moving. People are moving on. New things are coming in. Uh, it's quite evolutionary at the moment of what's going on in Wrexham. But equally, it's quite exciting because town centres are changing across the country. Uh, and, and we're up there trying to change with it. And that does, of course, lead us on to the topic. Um, there's a few things um, related to the A483, really, that come into today's conversation. Uh, one of them being the very frustrating news from many parties um, in the conversation of the Welsh Government's decision to actually um, essentially embargo some of the work that was planned for the 483. Now, especially in the context of the retail sector moving much closer in Wrexham towards the 483. How do you feel about the latest decision to actually reject the, the plans for upgrades around Wrexham? 
I think it's really, really, really disappointing. We've got opportunities now that we've spoken about. We've got businesses coming in. We've got the largest trading estate very soon. We can't grasp these opportunities because we can't build. We can't build homes or businesses because we've got the phosphate moratorium going on. That's holding Wrexham back, the hamstrung by Welsh government um, legislation. And yet again, here's another example of how they're holding us back. They've, um, under their roads review, they have decided for environmental reasons, which basically is penalising drivers, that they're not going to upgrade the Chirk Holton roundabout, which is the one that causes us all the queues when we go south, uh, and they're not going to upgrade junction three to six. Um, you know, this is really bad news for Exxon. We've been held back for someone like me that just come into the role three years ago. Look how things have changed. Look at the opportunities we've got. Look where we can head. Uh, look at the progression that we could we could take Wrexham forward. And yet we're constantly being pulled back. It's like wading through treacle half the time. And this road review is yet another um, tether holding us back. So we're not going to help drivers. We're not going to help Wrexham. We're not going to progress the infrastructure of Wrexham by upgrading our roads, which we need because of congestion. We've also got road works at the moment for the next nine weeks on the A483 towards the English border. That's causing absolute mayhem. Uh, it's been ill-prepared, um, ill-arranged, ill-thought-out because for the first few weeks we had work that was overrunning that absolutely stopped all traffic during rush hour on that road because the nighttime work overrun. We've had trains on fire, we've had a crash, we've had um, cars break down, we've had all, all sorts. We had traffic lights that rotted at Darling School, so all the drivers that couldn't go on that road were then stopped backing up going into Rossit, which caused a lot of concern for residents in Rossit and then the tail end into Gresford. Uh, you know, it, it's just been really ill thought out around roads and transport around Wrexham at the moment. Going back to the A483, uh, I don't know where this leaves the local development plan, because some of the local development plan, which has been rumbling on for years, um, was, was hinged on the fact that that junction around junction three and four and money penny around there was to be improved um, so we could build houses. We, we need more houses. We haven't got uh, housing opportunities for our young people or people coming into Wrexham to take some of these employment opportunities. And I'm yet to know whether the local de development plan will be put on hold even further because of the roads review. But, you know, this is the A483, the A5, the A55. You know, it, it, it's quite frustrating, I have to say, that you know, we've got all these opportunities and yet, yet again, we're being held back. I think frustrating is a word that's come back to us from a lot of listeners around the traffic problem, especially those li um, re really listeners living anywhere from sort of Guersil, Gresford, Sly as well, people who travel to Sly for work. Um, sort of everybody affected in that direction, that sort of corridor. Uh, we had huge numbers of complaints from people saying their journeys to work, both to and from Wrexham, have been made absolute chaos. I guess the work on the 483 needs to be done. There has been talk among the council in Wrexham. We need to better plan our strategies here. Is that something you would um, agree that in future they really need to think about how traffic is being routed? Uh, absolutely. And the knock-on effect, the ripple effect that um, these sort of roadworks have. I mean, we, when we had the roadworks last time, the A482, when we had the ripple, the rippling tarmac, uh, it was disastrous in Gresford. They didn't seem to quite learn uh, about, you know, putting in a better strategy for that. And now we see it all over again, hitting Rossit. Uh, I, I just think sometimes, you know, if you're going to reduce the A483 to one lane, which is going to impact massively during rush hour, why put traffic lights outside Dar Darlin School on the other route coming into Wrexham? It's common sense, really. Sometimes I just wish that the Trunk Road Agency, Wrexham Council, and the Community Council would all sit down and just say, this is what's planned, we need it, no one disagrees with that, um, but let's do it with least disruption for residents and drivers. Um, you know, well, you know, I think half the time a lot of these problems could, could be sorted out if everyone sits down and discusses it with a cup of tea. 
I, I think that it is ironic, isn't it? We we look at some of the reasons for, and it's very complex. The reasons for the Welsh government um, withdrawing support for the A four eight three junction improvements. However, one of the big things that they're concerned about is congestion, and, and yet some of the work that's happening seems to seems to cause exactly that, doesn't it? So it definitely um, there's a need to you know take yeah. a bigger picture view, but also to delegate some of that decision making to people who are based in the region and understand the region. I think that's really important, isn't it? Well, I think there's two points there you mentioned. One is sort of devolution, um, you know, and devolution is best served when it's devolved down to the lowest level, which is which is the council. They know what we need, what we want, and they, you know, the councillors are, are, you know, our representatives. Um, so, you know, devolution always works when it's down to the people that make the difference. But, you know, again, you, you're absolutely right, the A4H3, I've asked for information on the pollution. So they put these speed cameras in to slow the drivers down uh, because they were concerned about pollution levels. There's now, <laughs> the council now have agreed planning, and um, there's a planning development along the A483 where the pollution levels are high. So I've asked for information from the Welsh Government to say, well, you know, are these pollution levels still high? If they're not high, do we need to be cameras? Do we need to be 50 anymore? And why have, is there an agreement for a housing development right next to the road where you're penalising drivers because of pollution? So there's, there's a bit about joined up thinking here. But actually, you don't really know about unless you live in the area. And then you think, well, why is that happening? That really doesn't make sense. So I just think if we could, um, you know, as agencies, as representatives, um, Stop disagreeing, stop being disagreeable, get round the table over a good cup of tea, flat out the problems, and let's do our best for Wrexham going forward, apart from this stop-start approach that we're having at the moment. Let's talk about transport, but there's other things we'd like to look at in today's programme as well. Um, one of the big topics, of course, that affects Wrexham, Wrexham excuse me, um, is health, and lots to update on the topic of health, isn't it, at the moment? Oh, lots, lots, lots. Uh, it still continues to be uh, the biggest area of concern for orthopedic surgeon in North Wales. Had 998 new patients on their waiting list. Nearly a thousand people waiting for that first appointment with an orthopedic surgeon. Um, I also heard that, you, you know, you're waiting two years now for your first appointment with a urologist. And going back to that orthopaedic surgeon, they were telling me it's going to be 43 months, nearly three years, before you get that uh, hip or, or knee appointment. You know, there's money being thrown at this, or we're told money is being thrown at this. We're being told there's organisational changes and structural changes. And yet the issues go on and on and on. Um, so I, ha I continue to call for a new hospital uh, for Wrexham. I think we deserve one. We're a growing city. Eventually, when we sort out phosphates and roads, we will be a growing city. So we need a new hospital um, to support that. I obviously went back nursing during COVID, um, and I went on the COVID recovery bank. I went back to the Myla, so I, I know firsthand what it's like to try and be on a nursing bank. Uh, and I spoke to other nurses that were on the bank. I'm really pleased that the Welsh Government are looking at an all-Wales collaborative bank, because certainly it took me a long, long time to get back into nursing when they were calling for people to help. Uh, you know, ridiculously, it took me nearly eight months to offer that help and to, and to come forward because of the processes in place. So that obviously wasn't working. So I'm pleased the Welsh Government have done that, uh, because they spend over £100 million on agency staff alone. Uh, and I know, speaking to nurses, I know from first-hand experience, it's not just about salaries, although, you know, nurses deserve a lot more than they get. It's not just about salaries. It's about being valued. It's about terms and conditions. It's about uh, teamwork. It's about management and leadership. Uh, and it's also quite galling, actually, that when you're working with staff, agency staff, they get paid sometimes three or four times an hour more than you, and yet they do less duties than you. So I'm really pleased that, that Welsh Government are looking at this. I'm also pleased that the College, College Cambria, the University and the Myla uh, are doing nurse cadet, nurse training, university training for nurses, because 
I've been a big supporter of growing our own nurses because I'm a I'm a grow your own nurse. I trained at Wrexham back in the 1990s, uh, and I've been here ever since. Um, so at the university now, they have a health education and innovation quarter, which I was pleased to go to their launch. Uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a high-tech, high-end uh, establishment for training nurses. Now, I trained in a porter cabin at the back of the past lab, where we shared a book between three, and the last pages are always ripped out. The important pages in the book were always ripped out at the end. That's now gone. You know, what the state-of-the-art nurse training that they can now provide at uh, the university uh, is, is superb. Um, and so I'm really keen that I promote that and say, you know, well done to everyone involved in that. So hopefully in a few years' time, we shall be seeing our own nurses coming into the Myla and hopefully staying there. So uh, that's really good. The flip side of that is we've now seen a third health inspectorate report, a very negative report. We had one about the vascular services across North Wales. We've recently had one about the Myla A&E and the Head Fund Psychiatric Unit at the Myla. So again, you know, things aren't progressing as they should be. And I'm hearing people telling me I'm hearing, or the government tell me I'm hearing Betsy Cadwallader, who I support immensely um, to try and resolve these issues. It's not about, you know, being adversarial. It's about highlighting concerns of residents and working with them to make things better for residents. So, um, but, you know, they keep telling me they are making improvements. There's money coming in. I'm not seeing better outcomes for patients in Repsom, so I'll continue to fight for that. But on Maggie's unit, which I've been working with Maggie's charity and Steve Morgan Foundation to locate a Maggie's unit in North Wales. I did try for Repsom, uh, but they wanted to be equidistant across North Wales, so we're going to have a Maggie's unit at Blank Lewis. I'm pleased to say um, that that's going ahead as planned, and we should be seeing shovels in the ground very soon for that. That's uh, a cancer support unit. Um, and it will cover patients from across North Wales. Go back on Heads Van, um, because obviously they've had that um, very negative report. Um, we, we've had a lot of people reporting very positive experiences of community health on the whole, uh, mental health in Wrexham, but some definite issues there, especially for those who are most at need in moments of crisis. There seems to be a, bit of a gap in Wrexham. Uh, one constituent has actually mentioned the lack of any mother and baby facilities in the region. So various regions of the UK have designated mother and baby mental health facilities and somebody recently pointed out to us um, that doesn't seem to be anything in this area. What are your thoughts on that kind of provision? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Being, uh, being a mother is, is, is stressful enough. Uh, and if you've, if you've got some acute psychiatric, if you're having acute psychiatric episode, you need that support. You probably don't at that point need to, to be responsible or looking after a child as well because you, your acute episode need, means you need that support. But, you know, when, when you start to uh, get the care you need, get the support you need, get yourself uh, up on the straight and narrow again, you know, you are a mother. You need to be responsible for your baby. You need to work together to address some of the challenges and issues you have. And you can't do that unless you've got your baby with you. So a mother and baby unit is absolutely essential. Uh, another mother and baby unit that I've uh, been trying to support is the Women's Residential uh, Centre for Wales. It's a pilot scheme with the Ministry of Justice. Uh, and I've been working uh, on this with the Ministry of Justice and cross-party MPs as well. Um, Tanya Antonacci from uh, South Wales is very keen on this as well. We've been working together on it. Um, because when women go into prison, uh, sometimes that's not the best place for them. It's not the appropriate place for them. So we are trying to set up a pilot scheme in Wales. It's going to South Wales. Um, I won't say quite where it is yet because uh, there's some planning constraints there. But uh, it's a residential centre where women are helped because a lot of women end up in the judicial system because of domestic violence, uh, abuse. Um, so, and, and going to prison is not the right place for them. And I fought long and hard to try and get uh, a family's unit there, a mother and baby's unit there, because it's the same principle. Once you've got over your acute episode and you're a mother, you know, the last thing you want to do is say, well, you know, everything's fine now, you can go, and there's your, there's your child. You know, it, it's quite shocking, it, and it has, it has the potential to make people regret if they don't get that support. So 
I've been working on trying to get uh, a mother and baby unit there. And it's absolutely essential because being a mother, you know, it's, it's quite a stressful job. And if you compound that with some mental health issues as well, uh, this is something that we need to look at and, and women need that support. So going um, onwards then, um, to the topic of levelling up, we obviously spoke to you last time and that was very much um, after you just heard um, the decision that we didn't get the levelling up that um, what was hoped for for Wrexham, particularly around the Wrexham Gateway. Um, what are the current updates around that sort of topic at the moment? Well, I've made my opinion known here uh, loud and strong that I'm very disappointed that UK government didn't award the, the levelling up from bid. We absolutely need it. Uh, Real didn't get it either, uh, another area in North Wales that I think uh, should have got it. There is around three coming out uh, very soon. I'm um, yet to meet the council to decide or to listen to what their plan B is. We did speak about plan B beforehand. Uh, it will happen. I have no doubt it will happen. It will, it's just when it will happen. Uh, if we had got the levelling up fund, interestingly, uh, we couldn't do anything with it because we can't build in Wales because of the Welsh Government's phosphate embargo. So even if we were set on the money now, we couldn't do anything with it. But I will be speaking to the Council, seeing whether they want me to support their bid for round three. If they want me to do that, that's fine. I will absolutely do that. I, you know, I remain extremely disappointed that we didn't get round two. I think it's very narrow-minded and short-sighted, but we'll go for round three if the council want me to do that. They may have found alternative funding in the meantime, and I, I just see today that well, uh, Labour government have given £5 million pounds for a museum, football museum in Wrexham. Fantastic news, but I just wonder whether that £5 million could have been used to uh, build the new cop stand or you know, part payment for the Gateway project. So whilst it's good news, I just wonder whether uh, it could have been used for uh, the cop stand, which is something that we're really all of us very keen to see. Uh, and the gateway, the whole gateway project uh, needs to commence. But until anyway, even if you had this money, until we can sort out the phosphate issue, uh, there's, there's nothing being built. And, and again, what we're seeing here is a little bit of frustration among residents where the gateway project as part of the levelling up fund very clearly um, incorporated the introduction of a, a very much a multimodal, multimodal transport system where it really gave some real priority to moving away from car-based transport in that gateway to Wrexham, which seems a face value to fully align with the Welsh Government objectives, and yet they've rejected improvements, citing the same reasons. So a lot of frustration, I think, in residents in Wrexham, but I guess it's something to go back around the table with the local authorities um, and build from then look at sort of shaping that strategy to be more successful, isn't it, in the future, really? I think you're right. I think we just need clear messaging, um, you know, and it needs to be consistent messaging across the board um, because that whole gateway project is going to be very exciting and yet again another opportunity for Exxon. You know, active transport, really keen on that. Um, but, you know, it needs to be linked up. So one of the queries I had this week is from a resident at the new um, estate, housing estate on the Straight Mile. And you know, I would love all new homes to be built with solar panels and bus routes and cycle routes all within their planning. Now, that's not going to happen. I wrote to Welsh Government to say, can we legislate for this? Because I think this is a great idea. And, um, you know, we're all keen on supporting the environment, but we're not keen on slowing people down or hindering them or hindering their lifestyles either. So, you know, let's give people opportunities and choices. Not Let's not tell people what they should do. Let's give them choices and give them informed decision making so they can make the right choices. So, you know, one of the things um, <laughs> I found out this week is that at the new housing estate, there's a bus stop, which is great, but no buses go to it. So, you know, it's just this bit of joined up thinking again, strong messaging, clear messaging, joined up thinking. Um, I, I, you know, we've got lots going on in Wrexham. We just need that first domino to fall, really, uh, so everything else will progress. Yeah, that's brilliant. Sarah, thank you for your time. Just watching me have a, um, a countdown timer on. We've got a couple more minutes. We did have a, a question from a listener. But Aaron's actually vanished and somebody actually phoned up. Uh, one of the concerns, one of our, if you don't mind me asking, one of our listeners raised was um, they've tried to contact their local MP and said they feel ignored, they don't feel listened to. Now, that's actually not yourself. It's um, actually one of your colleagues. But they called us and said, well, you speak to Sarah Atherton. 
why do we, and they, they said we represent the disabled community and we feel like our governments and our authorities are completely ignoring us. Um, now, the, the disabled community is one of many communities, I think, at the moment who are feeling that they're not being listened to. And that ties into what we talked about today, doesn't it? That do you feel the needs of people like the disabled community are being really listened to, uh, you know, in central decision making? Do you think when the Welsh Government looks at these decisions around infrastructure and transport, are they listening to people like the disabled residents? Yeah, I, I can tell you, uh, and my opinion is absolutely not in Wrexham. So I went around the town with someone that was visually impaired, uh, and he went through all the obstacles that he faces just by going, uh, you know, from the pub uh, to the bus stop and the bus, uh, bus home. And I was so disturbed by the challenges that he had for a visually impaired person that I arranged for him to go out with a council, uh, Mark Pritchard. Uh, and I said to Mark, who is our council disability champion? And where is Wrexham Council's accessibility plan? So we've got all these big developments starting, hopefully soon. Um, you know, where are you making it? Where's the plan, the strategy to say that the doors are going to be wide enough? You're going to have level paths. Your curbs aren't going to be too high. You know, when we're, we're digging up roads to put cables in what are you doing to put those roads back that people can cross safely that have the aids and adaptations in the hardware of the street the streetwear if you like uh, to help people where are our bus routes to help people where are taxis that can take wheelchairs um, and I've been quite disappointed uh, to date with Rexham Council's response on that uh, basically they haven't uh, they haven't really got one and I think this is a prime opportunity to do that as Wrexham moves from a town to a city. We need to make sure that it's accessible for everyone, whether that's motor skills, uh, mobility, visually impaired, hearing impaired, any impairment. Uh, and I don't think that we do that enough. And I'd like to see Wrexham uh, do that. And um, certainly when I spoke to uh, Mark Pritchard about it, he said, you know, I'm happy to be uh, the disability champion, the councillor that has that title. So I'm really pleased he has that. Uh, but I would like to now see an accessibility plan for Wrexham so everyone can enjoy what Wrexham's got to offer going forward. And in the same breath, um, carers, carers support. Uh, I've been a little disappointed that we haven't got a carer strategy. Uh, I've been on to social services about that. Carers week's coming up in June. Um, I want to see more respite beds. So, so there are a few areas that I'm really surprised coming in as the MP that Wrexham does not have accessibility for disabled people and care of strategy. So these are two standards that I'm working uh, with the council to try and improve. And if I can just ask you for the benefit of listeners um, in your capacity as the MP for Wrexham, if listeners do feel they've got issues that you really do want to raise your awareness of, what is your recommendation for them to get in touch with you? How would they do that? Oh, they can do that by email. They can pop into the office. They can write me a, an old-fashioned letter. Um, they can phone up. Uh, all the traditional ways. The office is in um, Regent Street, opposite the sorting office, the post office. Um, but there is a strict parliamentary protocol uh, that I can only deal with constituents in the Wrexham constituency. And that gets a little bit tricky with the border with Cluid South because it's very close to Wrexham city centre. So sometimes people phone up, but there is no problem whatsoever. We find out who their uh, MP or MS is, uh, and we give them a choice of who to go to, and we'll let them know uh, where to go and how to contact them. Uh, but if they are constituents of mine, they can just knock on the door, phone up, email, or write me a letter, or stop me in the street because I'm out and about. Sarah, thank you ever so much for your time. I'm conscious that our time is almost up, and I'm conscious you've got plenty more to be doing. Thank you for your time today. We appreciate you speaking to us, and we'll speak to you again in the very near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.